Welcome to another exciting episode of the Neville Goddard Podcast. My name is Mr. 2020. Did you know I used to be a teenage bedwetter? I went from that to being a teenage black belt. I was told when I was 12 I'd be crippled by the time I was in my 20s. That's far from the truth. Today we're going to dive in. Today we're going to kick fear's ass. Let's dive into the Neville Goddard podcast. You know, I used to fear going to school so much that I would piss the bed every night. I'm not afraid to admit it. I was a teenage bedwetter. It was about the same time we did a scoliosis check at school. They had some experts come in, nurses, doctors, I don't know who they were. And they determined I had scoliosis, and, and so they sent me to the local expert who sent me to the big expert in Pittsburgh who basically said, look, if you don't do what we tell you to do, you're going to be crippled in your 20s. Just what I needed. All right, I'm a little boy. I already pissed the bed. My mom's friends were all into Jesus coming back. Armageddon, 1980. Right? Ronald Wilson Reagan is the Antichrist. Or is it Gorbachev? He's got the mark on his head. It was nuts. And somehow I got into this stuff. I was buying books at the corner bookstore. It was about a mile outside of my little hometown, Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. And one of the books I came across was by a fellow named Neville Goddard. Sounded good. The book never made it the whole way home and ended up in a, in a rubbish bin. You see books, I could get books, they were like 10 cents or 25 cents, I don't remember. But I had to walk like a mile, mile and a half to get there, depending upon the route if I took. If I went through the farmer's fields, it was about a mile. If I went via the road, it was like a mile and a half. And well, if I went via the road, I could stop by the one store and get some ice cream. That was fun. You can't go buy ice cream in the middle of the farmer's field. At least I can't. But here I am, I'm this little boy, I piss the bed, I'm told I'm going to be crippled, I'm afraid I'm never going to get to even kiss a girl because Jesus is coming back and there's going to be rivers of blood. That's my childhood. I was full of fear. I was full of anxiety. And then you'll never guess what happened. I had some desire consume me. I wanted to be, I, I chose to become a black belt in Kempo Karate. I wanted to learn Kung Fu. The reason I wanted to learn Kempo Karate was because Kempo had Kung Fu built in. It's like, oh my God, I can learn how to like be a karate guy and a Kung Fu guy at the same time. Talk about good fun. So I started imagining being a Kempo black belt. I changed my identity. Because as a Kempo black belt, I'm obviously not crippled up. I'm obviously not pissing the bed. I'm obviously, uh, Jesus has not come back. There were not rivers of blood. Because it takes a couple years to get a Kempo black belt. I fell so in love with that me that I became infinitely curious. Because here's the problem, guys. I lived in a little town, Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. There was nobody teaching anything. And when you know if it was a matter of weeks or months, it wasn't long at all. They passed out little handouts, little like uh, mimeograph things from the local Scottsdale YMCA. And a fellow named Rick Poxdaller was teaching Kempo Karate. Wouldn't you know? I signed up and my adventure began that moment. Because what I dreamt about was now becoming physical. The adventure actually began the moment I assumed the identity. And I've been exploring how to assume identities ever since. Because I tried. I tried as a little boy <laughs> to manage my emotions. All right, they sent me to counselors in school. I even saw a speech pathologist once. They said, they like, you know, they thought I had a speech impediment. And, and, and they said that we all, he doesn't have a speech impediment. He's just not confident. He doesn't feel like he has anything to say. I felt like I had tons to say. I felt like nobody was listening. Can you tell I've changed a few states along the way? 
let me tell you something. This shit works. And it begins like we shared in the other episode. Your emotions and your mentals and your physicals are not changing anything. They are what gets changed. I want you to draw a big circle in front of you right now. Use your finger, use your hand, use your pinky toe if you want to. Draw a big circle so you're looking through it. That's your state. And I want you to draw three little circles inside of that big circle. One of those is your emotions. One of it is your mentals, your thinky-do's, your thoughts. And the other one is what you physically do in the world. Your emotions, your thoughts, and what you physically do in the world, those all come from your state. They're the pancakes on your plate. So I don't try to change what I think. I don't try to change what I feel. I don't try to change what I do. But I'm going to tell you something. I told Joe Weldon a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago now, on the coaching call. Every day I pick the most painful thing I can do, and I do it early on. And what does that mean, and why would I do it? I noticed a while back that I love taking cold showers, and I hate taking cold showers. I love the way they invigorate my body. I hate stepping into cold water. And so what I do is I, I've got this new, cool, really cool routine. And God, it is giving to me in heaps and bounds. I do these twisty squat things in the cold outdoor shower. So we've got an outdoor shower. I turn it on heat for 20, 30 seconds just to rinse off the goop from the hot tub. And then I put it on ice cold. And for three minutes, I'm doing my thrusty squats into the cold water. And it feels marvelous. And that's because I have this identity of I don't back down. Neville kept returning to a couple things, one of them being your imaginal experience changes your physical, your mental, your emotional experience. Your experience changes your experience. And two, he did talk about identity-based manifesting. He didn't call it that, but he talked about it a lot. Who you're being in the world. You don't attract what you want, you attract who you are. And so I went from being that teenage, <laughs> honest to God, teenage bedwetter, afraid I'd never kiss a girl, told by the doctors I had scoliosis and would be crippled in my 20s. By the way, by the time I'm 18 years old, I'm visiting a chiropractor because I was in a car accident, and I've put on the chart that I had scoliosis. He goes, you don't have scoliosis. All right, he sent me to another specialist who confirmed I don't have scoliosis. Where'd it go? Where did all those health conditions go? Where did PTSD go? I stopped making room for them. You've got so much room on your plate. When you change your state, you change what's inside of it. But I want you to notice, what state are you giving life to today? If you're brand new with us and you're getting gold, my first suggestion is manifestingmasterycourse.com. You've got a dollar a day. It's a $97 course for a 90-day program. Here's one of the objections I hear, right? But what if it doesn't work? Radio, for the first 60, you know, for 60 days, when you sign up, you got 60 days. If it doesn't work, ask for your money back. But I don't want anyone signing up because of the guarantee. Because that puts you in a state of trier. I'm not a fan of that. So my suggestion is this. I want you to imagine you sharing us with, with us your updates because most Manifesting Mastery course members, they share with us updates once a week, and we share with you ours. We actually write back. It's a 90-day course, but you get an update from us, and we reply to yours. That's like, what, eight personal, nine personal contact points. I think it's pretty cool because I want to get to know you so I can imagine loving me for you. Number two. So the first objection, manifestingmasterycourse.com. It's 90 days. What if it doesn't work? Trust me, it works. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands of success stories. The question is, are you ready to play? Number two, here's the objection. I don't have the money. It's a buck a day. Right? That's it. It's $97 for a 90-day program. By the way, when you can start laughing at your objections, you realize you've changed size, you've changed states. What would they say if I took this course? What would they say if you changed your life? 
You get what would they say if I did da, 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 da. That's a state. That state's creating emotions in you. That state is creating mentals in you. That state is preventing you from taking action in all kinds of areas. And number three, <laughs> I don't have time, Mr. 20. It takes about 10 minutes a day. All right. About the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee, about the amount of time it took to listen to this podcast. 90 days of very specific, a very specific proven sequence we've been teaching for over 10 years. That's manifestingmasterycourse.com. Sign up today. It is guaranteed. Don't sign up because of the guarantee, because I don't ever want anyone signing up with that. Oh, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a sway. It probably won't work because that other shit I didn't do didn't work either. Right. Time to make a change. You get that's a state. Change your state. Let's dive in. Have a lovely day. My name is Mr. 2020, and it is time for us to go into the silence. Dive deeper. Be blessed. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.